Hi everyone, I'm back. Once again, this is Frank Rivera, president and founder of Sarcoidosis of Long Island. I have decided that I'm going to do the rest of these videos with no background and no thrills. It's just me and my story. Once again, let me start off with the, this video with our friendly disclaimer. All opinions on this video are mine and only mine. They do not represent any organization I represent. I will not be naming any hospitals or doctors for their own privacy. Welcome to episode two, my diagnosis and surgery. How is everyone doing today? I like to ask this because you can answer all you want, but I will never know what you said. When I last left off, I found out that I had sarcoidosis. What is sarcoidosis? Well, if you haven't looked it up by now, let me tell you what it is defined as by Foundation for Sarcoidosis Research. Sarcoidosis is an inflammatory disease characterized by the formation of tiny clumps of inflammatory cells called granulomas in one or more organs of the body. This disease is difficult to diagnose and many patients suffer for years before arriving at the correct diagnosis. I found out in April 2011 that I finally had sarcoidosis. I was told by the doctor, at least it's not cancer. He told me that I should only need some prednisone and I'll be fine. The funny thing is my brother-in-law has sarcoidosis and he has been in remission for over 20 years. So I'm thinking, okay, this will be easy. I just got cancer, so what can, how bad could this be? So boy, was I wrong. After seeing a local doctor, I was told again that I should take the 40 milligrams of prednisone and we will taper off and you will be fine. So I decided to go online and read about the disease. There was hardly anything about this disease. After about a month, I still wasn't feeling well. I decided to go look for a sarcoidosis expert. Lo and behold, I found one of the best sarcoidosis clinics in the world. It so happened to be in Manhattan. So me being me, I made an appointment. I had an amazing sarcoidosis doctor. Before I even showed up to my first appointment, she made sure she had all my past medical history. With that, she found out that I was misdiagnosed in Florida. I was like, what do you mean? She said, I never had lung cancer. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? How does that happen? How can you get that misdiagnosis? So she tells me and shows me cancer cells and sarcoidosis cells. They are totally different when under the microscope. Then she goes on and tells me, well, the chemotherapy may have helped me, but the radiation hurt my condition beyond repair. I was like, what do you mean by that? So, well, you see, the chemotherapy helped in that it kept the masses I had under control. While the radiation, while the radiation made it tough for me, my immune system to fight and also made my white blood cells go into overtime. So much for I should be fine with just prednisone. She had me take a full body CT scan and MRIs. As she called it, you lit up like a Christmas tree. At that point, since I was diagnosed so late, I had sarcoidosis in over 75% of my body. I was shocked and confused. I knew I was in pain, but I didn't know the complete cause of the pain. Well, she had me go see specialists. And when I mean specialists, I mean specialists. We had a pulmonary, a rheumatologist, a dermatologist, an ophthalmologist, cardiologist, neurologist, ears, nose, and throat doctor, and my sarcoidosis specialist. Just a couple. I may have forgotten one or two, but I'm sure I did. But I have some great news too. Diana and I got married on September 17, 2011. It was an amazing great day. We went on our honeymoon, a cruise from Barcelona to parts of Italy, Mallorca, and was back at Barcelona. It was beyond amazing. Well, then we came back to reality. After coming back from the honeymoon, I did a month long stint in a hospital. Remember that sick for sickness and in health? Yeah, we didn't expect it to happen so fast. Well, due to my sarcoidosis and the side effects of the medicines, I had nine operations in seven years. I won't bore you with each one, but just know that one of them almost killed me. I was told to take naproxen by a former rheumatologist, but since I had been diagnosed with IBS, I should never have taken that medicine. The side effect of the naproxen gave me some major pains in my stomach. And on a Sunday night, my brother-in-law and my wife pretty much had to carry me down the stairs because of the pain. When I arrived in the emergency room, they set me up with x-rays, blood tests, and some stomach medicine. They were going to send me home, but I was still in so much pain and had terrible acid reflux. Well, because of the naproxen and the IBS, I had diverticulitis and more. 
the emergency room doctor decided to do one final CT scan of my abdomen. And he found out I had loose air, better known as a hole in my intestine. By Monday morning, I was hauled in for emergency surgery. That is the last I remember until the Thursday after. I was told that as they were opening me up, they also found sepsis throughout my whole body. So I was also told that I had some very scary moments in the OR room. I don't remember them. <laughs> Thank God. They put me under heavy sedation and I was intubated from Monday until that following Thursday. The only memory I had was that the one surgeon came in after the tube was taken from my mouth. He, I was smiling. That is just who I am. Why wouldn't I smile? I'm alive. He told me that smile is why he became a surgeon. I ended up with a colostomy bag for six months before I had it reversed. So after that, I ended up with six surgeries in three years. It was so crazy. After I recovered from my second surgery, I decided I needed to help people like, like me to find doctors and information about sarcoidosis. I didn't want anyone to go through what I had to. That is what made me start Sarcoidosis of Long Island. That is why I'm wearing my hoodie. See? So, I am going to stop this episode here. I'm sure you're tired of hearing my voice by now. But stay tuned for episode 3, My Advocating Years. Coming soon. <laughs>